beauties, it's Brittany. I'm about to start getting ready for work. I work quite late in the day today, so it's already close to 12 o'clock, but I have to leave in about an hour, so I'm gonna do my full face of makeup with you guys. Uh, I have to have this last for a really long time. I have some days that are six hours, I have some days that are eight to nine hours, and I am on my feet all day, so I definitely need it to be lasting and holding up throughout the entire day. So I'm going to walk you through what I do to make that happen, and let's get started. So for me, because I have dry skin, hydration is super important if I want my makeup to last all day and not look cakey or um, like crepey or anything like that. So I'm gonna first start with my Smashbox Primer Oil. And I love this stuff because it is super hydrating, but it doesn't make my skin feel oily. So I just do about three drops of that in the palm of my hand, massage my hands together, and then press it into the skin. So I do eventually press it everywhere, but I do like to focus in areas for me that are super dry. So that's around my nose. My forehead gets pretty dry, it like feels tight. And then the middle of my face. So now I do my eyes first, but I like to use that primer first because it is an oil. I want to give it more time to settle into the skin. And now I'm going to move on to eyes. I use an eyeshadow primer. Right now I have the Too Faced Shadow Insurance, but whatever shadow primer you find works best for you. My actual favorite that I will repurchase once I've used up the ones that I have is the NARS Pro Primer. That one is amazing. Something I started doing fairly recently is massaging that primer into the eyelid with a brush and not just my fingers. I actually find that this removes enough of the product and leaves the perfect amount so that I'm not left with any kind of creasiness. Sometimes when I massage it in with just my fingers, I do notice I have like a line of the shadow insurance in my crease because my eyes are slightly hooded. I pop chapstick on pretty much the entire time I'm doing this routine. My lips are so dry, especially in the winter months, so I put that on constantly while I'm doing my full face. Now that we're zoomed in a little bit, I'm gonna be using the Urban Decay Naked 2 palette today. I've really been loving pulling out my old Naked palettes and putting them back into rotation in my makeup routine. So what I'm gonna do first is grab Foxy, which is just a matte kind of cream color. I'm gonna dust that all over the eyelid, just as a nice little base here before we get started. Now, unfortunately, there is only two matte shades in this palette, that Foxy shade and then Tease. So I'm gonna take Tease and build this up in the crease. I don't think I realized when this palette first came out how essential matte eyeshadows are to building up an eye look, but I know now and I wish there were more mattes in this palette. The brush I'm using to do this is the Morphe R39 brush. So once that kind of is just messily placed in the crease, I take a blending brush with nothing on it and just kind of blend out the edges. Then go back and add more. Eyeshadow application can be quite tedious, especially if you want it to look really super blended. Okay, now one of my favorite colors lately is like a rusty red. This is in 306 and it is a beautiful deep rusty red. And so what I'm gonna do is take, what brush am I gonna take? This is a Co Covette brush in S185, and I'm going to take this eyeshadow by L'Oreal. It's so beautiful, and I'm going to pop this right above that tease color that I placed in the crease. I love just that like slight pop of rusty red right in my crease area lately, so that's what I'm going to do. Now, it's not like super bam in your face. It's just kind of like, hey, I've decided to join the party. I want to be part of this look. Uh, that's kind of the the uh, technique that I use when it comes to this kind of color. Do you guys ever find this that your right eye is better than your left eye if you're right-handed and vice versa? Because I definitely find that. I'm gonna take a little bit of Roxy and tap that on my blending brush and then pop that right on the brow bone. Now I'm not really highlighting with this shade. I'm more using this shade to help kind of blend down these other shades if they've gotten up too high on the eyelid. I don't like my shadows too close to the brow bone because I have a small eye. I really need to make sure that I'm focused with placement and blending. Pepper's in here with me, so if you hear a little like, uh -uh, that's her. <laughs> now I'm gonna start to build things up. I think I'm going to take YDK and Busted. Whoop, I'm gonna take YDK and Busted and kind of pop those on the outer corner. Now there is quite a lot of fallout with these, so make sure you're tapping off your brush. I'm using that same Morphe brush still. I really use minimal brushes when it comes to eyeshadow because I don't want to be cleaning a br bunch of brushes. Ah! Did we not just see that? I cleaned it up. One second. And that is why I keep baby wipes nearby because 
messes happen. <laughs> Something I've learned over the years is that your eyeshadow doesn't look as good without foundation on. So if you're not completely happy with it, but you feel like you've done enough to make it look good, just finish it off, finish your foundation, and then go back to the eyes if you need to add things or dull things down a little bit because without foundation on, I feel like it looks a little crazy. And now I'm going to take an e.l.f. concealer brush, just a very dense shadow brush or concealer brush, whatever you can find in your life. And then I'm going to take the shade uh, Verve, which is a beautiful shimmery silver gray type of color. And I'm gonna pop that right on the lid. Did this the other day at work and got a lot of compliments on it, so I'm gonna do it again. Spray my brush with MAC Fix Plus to give it that kind of wet foiled look and then pat the shadow on. And I'm going back into that Morphe brush and I'm gonna use Pistol, which is a darker gray and kind of smooth out the edges here. All right, I'm gonna clean off that brush slightly, just kind of massaging it into a towel that I have on my desk here. And that kind of cleans off enough of it. And I'm gonna go into a little bit of blackout, which is super dark, but I want to intensify that outer corner just, just a little bit, just a little bit. And so I'm gonna take a little bit of that. I'm done with the eyes for a little bit. I will be going back doing lower lash stuff and mascara and all of that, but let's move back to the face for a little bit, shall we? Primers are key for making your makeup last a long time. So I already went in with that primer oil at the beginning. I'm now going to take the Speckle Tinted Under Makeup Primer by Laura Geller. This is in the shade Champagne, and it is a little illuminating, which I love. I have dry skin, so I want to balance out the long wear full coverage aspect with the hydrating, illuminating aspect. So that's the kind of mix of products that I like to use. So I take a healthy amount of that. It's very light in consistency and I just massage it all over my face and down onto my neck. So then I'm going to go in with the Benefit Porefessional. This is a pore filling, pore minimizing primer and I like to put this in, I like to pop this in my T-zone and then on the start of my like nose cheek area here, I feel like my pores are quite enlarged there so I pat this primer in those areas. And I definitely do like a patting motion as opposed to more like massaging into the skin because that's really going to fill those pores in. All right, and lately what I have been mixing together is my Tony Doll by Lancome and the Urban Decay Velvetizer. Now I do have dry skin, so you might be concerned that I'm pulling out a mixing powder to mix into my foundation and it's a full coverage foundation, but all of the preparation I've done on my skin has really prepped my skin for this kind of duo that I've got going on here. So I'm gonna mix a healthy amount of these two together. And normally I like to apply my foundations with the Beauty Blender, but because I'm mixing in with the powder, a brush really is the best application for that kind of combination. So I've mixed those products together on a little stainless steel palette that I have. And now I'm going to dot it all over the skin and then blend it out with just my e.l.f. little foundation brush guy. Always blend your foundation down your neck, even if it matches you perfectly. Don't chance it. Don't chance it, guys. I forgot to mention the shade that I wear of the Tony Doll is 110 Ivory C, but I can also wear 100 Neutral, which is clearly more neutral in tone. This one is more cool in tone. Oh, Bip. Is it such a hard knock life being such a cute pup? Guys, I definitely need to get my brows done or do them myself. Just have not had time. I'm gonna take the Catrice concealer and I'm also gonna use a little bit of the Tony Doll Ultra uh, Wear Camouflage Concealer. I have the shade 90N, so I'm gonna kinda build together a beautiful combination here. I'm gonna spray my Beauty Blender with a little bit of MAC Fix Plus. Is it also impossible for you guys to blend out your concealer without making like the crazy alien face? Cause it's impossible for me. By the time I'm done with my makeup, my hand hurts. <laughs> Something I've started to notice in my makeup is that uh, my smile lines are becoming more prominent as I get a little older here. So I try not to smile <laughs> while I'm blending things out so it doesn't settle. Uh, and so I try to wait till after I do like my powder and everything so that everything's nice and set. Does that always happen? No, sometimes you just need to smile in life and let yourself just be happy and not worry about your lines. <laughs> So I'm looking very full coverage, which is what I'm looking for. I want this to stay on my face all day long, and that is gonna happen. I'm going to take a little bit of this Rimmel Pressed Powder, 
and I'm going to dust this on my face just lightly. I don't want to use a ton of powder because I am dry, but I do want to set areas that can get a little faded throughout the day. And now I'm going to illuminate under the eyes a little bit with the uh, an illuminating powder. I hate the like foundation on my lip feeling, so I take a Q-tip and clean my lips off. Time for some brows. I am going to use my Maybelline Brow Duo. It's the Define and Fill Duo in Auburn and hope that I have enough for two brows because my pencil is at the end of its little, little rope here. I don't normally go back and forth so much, but because this is at the end here, I don't want to have one brow with one color in and one brow with another color. so. I'm going back and forth. It does have a powder on the other end that I am going to use. The applicator is quite large, so if you have thin brows, it probably wouldn't work for you, but my brows aren't super thin, luckily. I was not part of the 90s plucking away of the brows. All right, let's do some eyeshadow on the lower lash line now that we have concealer on. So I'm gonna take a pencil brush and tease. I'm really gonna mimic what I did on the upper lid on the lower lash line, so I'm gonna take tease, I'm gonna take YDK, busted, um, verve on the very inner part of my lid and just kind of start blending things out here. Bronzer, I'm gonna use my beloved butter bronzer from Physicians Formula and I just dust this all over the face. This is like the perfect shade, the perfect consistency, wears beautifully, never looks like muddy on my face and I'm a very fair so that is definitely an issue that I have with a lot, a lot of bronzers and this one just is perfect and it smells like the Caribbean and I want to go on a cruise when I wear this. I've brought this on pretty much every cruise with me so it reminds me of that. My favorite blush of all time is Becca Flower Child blush. It's very pink. It's maybe a little too pink for this look, but I don't care. I love, love pink blush. I feel like as a fair gal, my face is not complete unless I've added some blush back onto my face. Highlighter, I'm using the new Maybelline Molten Rose Gold. Beautiful highlighter. Very prominent. Woo! Okay, take my beauty blender if I find things are looking a little, a little much, but the beauty of needing your makeup to last all day is if you put a little bit more on in the morning, you might look like you're a little heavy, but midday, your face, still looking fantastic, fades gently with your day. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. I haven't done any eye mascara or anything yet. I'm getting there. Don't you worry. I'm going to set my face first before I put mascara on. This is the Maybelline Master Fix Wear Boosting Setting Spray. Mix that up really well. Shake it, shake it, shake it, and then spray it all over. And then I use a little bit of MAC Fix Plus and grab my fan from the Caribbean and fan away. All right, I need to move the mirror closer because I'm going to do liner, mascara, all of that jazz. So I curl my lashes with my Tweezer Man Eyelash Curler. I'm then going to take my NARS Black Eyeliner and I'm going to tight line. My lashes are naturally red and if you have red eyelashes as well, tight lining is really going to help fill in that gap where you might notice that you have some red really at the far base of your lash but your mascara looks really good but you have that like funky little line. This will definitely help with that. I am going to do a little bitty wing because I loved wing liner and I'm going to use the uh, L'Oreal liner. They have blacks, browns, very vibrant colors. I'm going to take the black one. Again, you can also use this technique for filling in that very fine part of lash right at the bed of the lash and that will help your mascara look more beautiful. Your lashes will look longer, all that jazz. I'm going to prime the lashes. This is the L'Oreal Voluminous. My favorite is the Lancome Seals Booster, but this is a good alternative. I just like that one a little bit better. Uh, I'm going to use my Lancome Hypnos Drama Mascara. You want to apply the mascara right after you've applied the lash primer. Pap, you can't mess with me. This is a delicate time. Is it weird that my right eyelashes are a lot more funky than my left eyelashes? My left eyelashes always look way better. 
For lips, I think I'm going to do a red lip today. I'm going to take this L'Oreal lip liner in the shade um, Matte in Mon Manhattan 100. It's a little more orangey red, but we'll make it work. These lip liners from L'Oreal are beautiful. Very creamy, easy to apply. Now I'm going to take the Juicy Shaker from Lancome in Kiss Me Cherry. All right, I'm gonna go pop my contacts in and then I will put mascara on my lower lashes and we'll check everything out, make sure everything looks blended. All right, so this is the finished makeup look. This routine does take me about 45 plus minutes. If that's not the, the time you have in the morning, then this is not the routine for you. But I'm somebody who clearly loves makeup. I like to spend more time on it in the morning. It's kind of like my little meditation time for myself and I love to play around with new products and mix things up. So that's what I'm looking for in my makeup routine. If you need something that's more quick and concise, I could definitely do that for you. Let me know in the comments down below because I've definitely had jobs before where I wake up at like 5:45 a.m. and I'm like, I am not playing around with 800 products. So I have been there. I know that different people are looking for different things. This is currently what I am doing and what works for me. Clearly I'm not wearing a red lip every day. I'm not doing the same eye look every day, but when I want my products to last the entire day, this is the routine that I do. So I thought it might be helpful if I popped on here at the end of my day. Uh, it is currently like 10.30, I think. Uh, so I've had this makeup on for good eight and a half, nine hours. And I just wanted to show you what it kind of looks like after a full day of wear. Obviously my lip color has faded away. I was eating and I actually ate an apple so I like rubbed it off so it didn't get all over my apple. Uh, but my eye makeup is held up, my brows are still on, my foundation still looks really good. Right here I could use like a little bit of Fix Plus and like padding but I have not touched up. I did add a new different highlighter on that I was kind of just playing with at work uh, so that's uh, <laughs> changed a little bit but I just wanted to show you kind of like how beautiful this routine does wear on me throughout the day and I am on my feet all day and kind of moving around and very like active uh, I I do try to not touch my face throughout the day I will take a q-tip and kind of like clean out the inner corners because shadow can kind of build up in there and I don't really ever blot or add powder I, today I definitely didn't I do feel like I could use a little bit of like fix plus on a sponge and like padding but I have not touched up whatsoever and everything is wearing beautifully. So I thought it would be helpful if I popped on and showed you what it looked like. So I hope you guys enjoy. Follow me on social. All the links are down below. Make sure you're subscribing. And I would really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up for me. It lets me know what kind of content you guys like to see. And it also helps with the wonky YouTube algorithms and things like that. So let me know in the comments below what you want to see in the future. And I will take this little stick off my teeth and... See you in the next video. <laughs> Bye, guys.